My next guest today is Paul Barlow Hill of Cotswold Baking, who I'm very pleased to say has not only come to visit us today and have a bit of a chat about who he is and what he does, but has arrived with cake. Always bring cake. Ah, oh, <laughs> cake always helps. So, you know, no pressure to anyone else, but you might be my favourite guest. So, <laughs> so apart from the cake, and I'm going to try not to be too distracted by that now, I think I'm even going to ask the audience if they would like to try a piece and give us some feedback. Um, so, Paul, you have a real, um, you have an artist's background in terms of patisserie um, and have studied under some of the greats as well. Wow. But I know you haven't, you know, you haven't always been running your own bakery. And so how's, how has all of this come about? Take us through a little bit. Cotswold Baking came about five years ago. But prior to that, I've been a pastry chef since I was about 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So started working in bakeries when I was a kid at school, sort of going to work at three o'clock in the morning. I my whites, um, working weekends. And then from that, I then sort of went to Cajun College, finished Cajun College, joined the RAF. I was in the RAF for three years left there and I worked to work at the waterside in Bray, Michelle Rue Senior for three years, a Gosh. pastry chef there. Um, so yeah, that was good, best, best training I had as far as being a pastry chef was concerned. Uh, that must have been an amazing experience. Yeah, fantastic, yeah, really good. You sort of got mm. 20 chefs in the kitchen all kind of going in one direction, working with quality ingredients, all have one aim. So yeah, it's, it was fantastic, really, really good school for me to, to learn my trade and sort of, you know, grow with, with what I wanted to make and sort of get my background in there. So yeah, it was really good. Yeah. And was that what sort of cemented your your passion for uh, for baking cemented, specifically? I'd or? Always, I've always loved doing petit, so I'd always mm. loved, I mean I'd loved cooking ever since I was about sort of 13, so it's kind of, when I went to school, kids were going to school with, with woodwork projects, I was turned out with a box of ingredients, so kind of, <laughs> you get teased a bit at school and I'm turned out with eggs and flour and sugar and stuff, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it kind of, I'd always wanted to cook, and then patisserie from working at the bakery, I always wanted to bake. And then from sort of going to the waterside and working there, I always wanted to go into the pastry section. So yeah, that was kind of, and everything's made there from breads to sorbets, ice creams, desserts, from start to finish. It's a good training background for all things patisserie concerned. So yeah, they had rooms, so you learn to make viennoise, croissants, dames, just stuff for breakfast, so yeah. Ah, oh, you had me at viennoise, that was it. So, but, um, and so from that you decided, what made you decide to sort of to go out on your own? Um, well, I used to run a pub locally with my wife, I used to run the Pork Alarms, um, so when I, we decided we needed to get out of that, we've been running that for quite a while, we needed a, a change, so my wife and I works for local vets, I came out of it and decided that uh, somebody that I used to talk to in the pub said to me, you couldn't buy a decent cake anywhere, and, you know, you kind of struggled for a dessert, not so much a cake, but a dessert or something you wanted for the weekend, um, so we started chatting, uh, so he backed me financially. And that was always the thing, as far as any new business, you can have all these ideas, but unless you've got the sort of the financial backing to start it off. So that was very lucky in that respect. Mm. So yeah, he kind of backed me financially, and then I rented a unit. Um, so everything's kind of made there, um, and it's just kind of grown from there. It sort of started off just doing a couple of farmer's markets, a bit of dessert here and there. Now I supply caterers, um, I still do a couple of farmer's markets, do food festivals, wedding cakes. Businesses I supply, I supply an online company, um, selling my cakes online. Um, so yeah, sort of grown from there. Really. And what would you say is the the main sort of customer base that you have? Is it supplying to business or to to individuals? It's business, Celebration? Also, yeah, more business. I mean, wedding cakes is coming to wedding cake season now, so yeah, yeah. that's kind of a, a big sort of mainstay through the summer. Um, business wise, is a big because that's all year round. Um, from sort of people that like the online thing is a new thing that started about three months ago, so they've been selling my cakes. But then obviously delis, farm shops, coffee shops, that sort of thing, they're pretty much all year round. It has its peaks and its troughs, obviously summer is, is mad busy. Mm. Coming into Easter it starts picking up and then sort of January, February it quiets down. But then I have catering companies that supply that are kind of quite busy all the way through the, through the year. So I had a gig in uh, June, July, there's a catering that supplies, there's an opera. They do the catering for that, so they have like 2,000 desserts over a six week period. Wow. So it's kind of, yeah, it kind of goes mad. Quiets down a little bit, <laughs> and it goes mad, and so yeah, it's kind of difficult to Peaks kind of control and I do notice the cake that you bought us today, I'm still distracted by the cake. Cool. So it's carrot and cardamom, yeah. um, and it's gluten-free as well. So is gluten that... Gluten-free is becoming a massive, massive part of my business now. Um, yeah. I just did a market at Burford over the weekend at um, Upton Smokery, and I try when I do food festivals and markets, I try to make my stand about 90% gluten-free, because I do a lot of desserts, so my lemon tart, I did a rhubarb on almonds, chocolate salted caramel tart, there's a passion fruit mallow, 
So all those things I try and do is gluten free because I get a lot of people who come up that who are celiacs who do, you know, are, are, but also a lot of people that want to do it for health reasons. They just decide to cut out wheat from their diet. I personally, I don't eat a lot of bread. I don't eat a lot of wheat products now, myself and my wife. So we haven't cut it out of our diet, but it's just we're eating less. So mm. it's kind of become a big part of my business, yeah. Definitely. And has that changed how you will develop a new recipe or how you'll work on it? For sure, yeah. I, if I can develop, not all things work. The biggest thing for me with gluten-free was pastry because pastry is a nightmare to make with mm. other foods. And so it's developing that. And now I've sorted my recipe out. It took me a while to get it to work. Now it works consistently, so I can tweak a lot of my recipes that way. Cakes, you can, some you can tweak and some you can't. So yeah, it tends to be more that, I mean, I use a lot of ground almonds. I use about sort of 30 kilos of ground almonds a week. Wow. So it's kind of a lot of ground almonds in my cakes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's kind of developing. If I can tweak it, I can. If not, I don't. I'm not going to tweak a recipe if it doesn't work. There's no point in putting it gluten-free if it's not. Yeah. Know, people don't want to eat it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the other thing that I think I read was that you really like to source your ingredients locally. And that does include some of the things like um, walnuts. Yeah, where he farm, where my unit is, mm. they have walnut trees and hazelnut trees on the farm. Wow. So yeah, depending on the crop, uh -huh. so, like, if they have a good crop, we try and use what I can. Obviously, the amount of stuff I'm using, I, I'm not going to say I'm using all of these predominantly their product, but I try and blend it in. Mm. Mainly sort of garnishes and stuff, like the walnuts and hazelnuts on the desserts. Yeah. They have apple trees, they have an orchard on there, so I use the apples in the season. So yeah, um, raspberries, etc. So I try to as much as I can. Um, and then obviously, free range eggs, I use local eggs. Um, I use an English unsalted butter. I try and use a local honey. So I try as much as I can, as long as the product, the quality of the product is good, mm. which there is. There's some fantastic products around here now, especially in the Cotswold area and around this area. So yeah. yeah, I think the opportunity to lo use local produce wherever you can. For sure, yeah, that's great. Because it's, I, you know, p p businesses support me, I support other businesses. So it's that kind of roll on effect as much as I can. So, you know, I, yeah, I've had to use up to sort of anywhere between 400 and 600 eggs a week. Wow. So it's, you know, yeah. he's a local farmer. He's, you know, he's mm. a big ex of to me, so yeah. Okay, and so obviously you're, you're using local suppliers and you know, and they're providing for you and you're baking. So how can us local people, <laughs> how can we get hands on your local products? Uh, well, I suppose through, um, supply, supply through local farm shops at Wickham mm -hmm. Farm, a couple of delis in Chipping Norton, um, but then also I bake to order. So if anybody wants cakes, desserts, they basically ring up Cotswold Baking, contact me, and then I make stuff to order. So desserts for dinner parties, birthday cakes, that sort of thing. You know, as long as I've got plenty of notice, I can make anything to order. So everything's made, I don't hold stock. I don't basically make a load of cake on a Monday and then hope that I sell it through the week. Like I had literally got one or two cakes left on the weekend, so everything's kind of made to order. That way I control my, you know, my overheads, I control my wastage. I don't like holding, or you know, on the off chance that somebody rings me up and says, have you got a brownie set in the fridge? No, I don't. If I can make you one, but I don't do a sort of 24 hour turnaround, but yeah, that sort of way. Fantastic, and where can we find you online? Uh, Cotswoldbaking.co.uk. Excellent, well, I shall certainly be looking you up, right. and um, I can't wait to cut and try this.